Welcome back to the Wargrove of Well, and today we're going to be covering the Osiric Bone Reapers sub-factions um, and covering their lore and how they perform on the tabletop. First up we have Mortis Praetorians. Uh, these guys I would give a B tier in terms of tabletop competitiveness. Their army-wide ability is minus one bravery to, uh, for enemies within 12 inches of any Mortis Praetorian unit. Their command ability is they reroll hit rolls targeting enemies that made a charge move this turn. And their command trait is once per battle you get d3 more relentless discipline points. And their artifact changes the rend characteristic of one melee weapon to minus three rend. For the lore of these guys, this is Catacross's Legion. Uh, if you don't know who Catacross is, he is the Mortark of the entire Bone Reaper legions so if you aren't familiar what that means he's kind of like the big boss he's an important dude um, and in, uh, he's an incredible strategist and generally a very good military leader um, he he's kind of reminiscent of caesar uh, both in his uh, model and just kind of how he carries himself and his general lore um, i could do a whole video on catacross but right now we're just focusing on the sub factions uh, each Bone Reaper from this legion possesses an innate mastery of all warfare, and the generals of this uh, sub-faction are actually made up of the composite souls of the various generals that served Catacross well when he was alive. Um, on the tabletop, the Mortis Praetorians are only good if you're taking Catacross. Uh, Catacross gets a few buffs if you are in Mortis Praetorian. Um, like his command ability aura gets a lot bigger and other stuff like that. Um, Mortis Praetorian is fairly weak without Catacross. They're kind of neither here nor there. Um, the command ability is good, but it's situational and it lasts for only a small portion of a, a turn or a, a game really. The artifacts is good. Uh, third edition favors a lot of rend, so getting uh, one of your leaders to have a massive amount of rend is very powerful. Um, overall, Mortis Praetorians are middle of the road. They're they're B tier. They're pretty okay. Next, we have the cream of the crop, the boogeymen of of OCR Bone Reapers. If you if you know anyone who used to play. Uh, Age of Sigmar, when Osiark Bone Reapers first came out, these guys were terrifying. They were the biggest, baddest, meanest things around um, for a long time. And then they got nerfed, and then they got r fixed in 3rd edition so that they're actually really good again. Um, these are your best sub-faction. Their army-wide ability is they worsen rend for enemy attacks by one. Uh, this is phenomenal. Like I always try to state is rend is so important in third edition and weakening your enemy's rend just flat out is fantastic. Uh, their command ability is also great because it gives one unit rend for uh, that combat phase, which is just amazing. It's perfect. Uh, the command trait is good. It is just two to a plus two to your leaders or your generals uh, wound characteristic uh, simple easy it's good the artifact also amazing negates the first wound allotted to the bear per phase this can get a whole lot of mileage out of it if you put it on your general you have a tougher general with more wounds and he's going to be able to uh, stick around a whole lot longer for the lore these Bone Reapers are made up of bones that have turned to stone or bedrock from spending eons in the earth. They are resistant to most attacks, having it just kind of having the weapons that attack them break and just they are incredibly tough and durable. Uh, they are interestingly nomadic and they're set loose to pillage ancient bones and um, to kill those who are protecting the ancient bones. Uh, in terms of tabletop, they are the best sub-faction. If you want to be competitive, this is the sub-faction you go for. Um, it is the best all-around sub-faction. You can't really go wrong with Petrifex Elite. 
Next up, we have the Stalyark Lords. Uh, I give these guys a C plus rating. For their army-wide ability, they can run and charge. Simple and easy to use. Uh, for their command ability, they can retreat and charge for mounted units, like your horsemen or your liege cavaloses, etc. Uh, the command trait is for your general, he gets a plus one to hit against heroes, and that hero uh, gets a minus one to target the general. It's good, but it's so situational that it's kind of... It doesn't do very much in an average game. It's good for hero sniping and hero hunting, but that's not all that useful. There's better ways to go about it. The artifact is for the Leech Cavalos or the named character for their unstoppable charge, their damage on the charge ability, you roll d3 additional dice. This is fine, but it's still just not that good. There's better artifacts out there. It's fine. So for the lore, these guys are horsemen and knights of the Osir Bone Reaper Empire, and they have a twisted sense of honor, kind of like a... They, they think themselves chivalrous, but really it's kind of mean. Uh, before they attack a town, they will ride up to the town, probably in the dead of night, and issue an impossible challenge to the town. And when the town fails, uh, the, they, they just raise the settlement to the ground. And they justify this by, well, we gave them a chance. We, we said we would go away if they completed the XYZ. Um, so they're kind of, kind of mean. Um, on the tabletop, this is the mobility fa uh, faction. They have fantastic flexibility. And if you really enjoy that kind of play style, you can definitely build a list around it. Um, the only reason I uh, rate this sub-faction so low is it kind of sits outside of what OBR is good at. Uh, OBR likes to uh, move on to an objective and sit there and just weather the storm. They, um, they like to be very castle-y, uh, to put it in another term. Um, these guys are all about mobility, flexibility, cavalry, and that kind of stuff. And you can definitely make it work. OBR just lends itself to a different uh, play style. Next, we have the Ivory Host. This is the worst subfection. I'll explain why. Uh, for their army-wide ability, they get a plus one to hit rolls and a minus one to their save rolls if they are near an injured OBR unit. This is horrible. The fact that their army-wide ability has a nerf in it is kind of baffling. The plus one to hit is nice, it's cool, but it's not worth minus one to save. Uh, there's other ways to get a plus one to hit. The command ability ne negates the minus one to save uh, on their army-wide ability. This is fine, I guess, but it shouldn't exist in the first place. The nerf to their army-wide shouldn't exist. Uh, the command trait is fine. In the hero phase, roll a dice, on a 5-up, you add 1 to the attack characteristics of the general's melee weapon. This is good. Uh, it's not very likely to go off, but it can stack up to be kind of nice. The artifact is plus 1 attacks for a melee weapon. Simple and good. Uh, despite being kind of bad, they have some interesting lore. These Bone Reapers are native to Gur and are crafted from tusks and teeth and bones from beasts and other creatures that you can find in Gur. Uh, they are ambitious and want to claim all of Gur, the realm of beasts, for Nagash. Uh, they are prideful and claim to be good artisans, but they, because they come from the realm of Gur, they innately have this berserker fury that they try to hold back just because it makes them less disciplined um, but that doesn't always work out tabletop this is the worst obr faction which is a shame their uh, paint scheme and the lore is cool um, i think if in a future book or errata if the army wide ability didn't have a negative and the command ability was something for hunting monsters or big wound units that would be awesome. Then that would go with their lore of like beast hunters and uh, stalkers of Gur. 
So I think a little bit of a mixed a missed uh, opportunity for these guys. Uh, Null Myriad. These guys are the anti-magic sub faction, and for that I gave them a B minus. Their army wide ability is they can negate a spell or endless spell on a five plus. This is pretty good, especially against uh, heavy magic armies. Um, the command ability is pretty good too because it changes that five up to a two up for our unit. So if your enemy has a really really powerful spell that you just don't want to go off, this is a good one to to put down. Uh, their command trait for the general is the general is minus one to hit in melee, and also they give a minus one bravery to enemies within three inches. That's fine. Uh, it's a good uh, defensive buff. The artifact is fantastic. The You pick one melee weapon, and it is completely unsavable and unnegatable. So if you get a wound, if you succeed in wounding, it just does the damage. Your opponent cannot save it. And that is crazy strong. Uh, so for these guys' lore, is they're known as the Magic Eaters. They are incredibly anti-magic, and they were actually the first of the Bone Reaper Legions to be formed and experimented with by Nagash. And since they've been around so long, they glow with a baleful energy of uh, Shayish. So they kind of glow a, a evil green teal color. Um, and also how they got their um, anti-magic properties is they've stood guard at the Shyishan perimeter or kind of so if you are unaware in the mortal realms the further out from the center of a mortal realm you get the more magical and more crazy the landscape and environment gets they start taking on more of the winds of magic from that particular realm so these guys stood guard in a very heavily magic um, rich place and they fought off monsters and abominations as well as chaotic invasions. And so because of this, they are all but immune to magic. Uh, they are very situational, but in a good way. Magic is incredibly powerful in Age of Sigmar and often the top armies use a lot of magic. So having a way to negate that is powerful. Um, the artifact is amazing. Like that is probably one of the best artifacts in the game. If you can put it on a good beefy hero like a Leech Cavalos or something like that. Um, if your local meta has a lot of magic, then Null Meridians is pretty good. Other than that, they're kind of situational. Last but not least, probably one of my more favorite sub factions is the Crematorians. I give these guys the meme tier. So uh, for their army-wide ability is every time a model is slain, you roll a dice, and on a six up, you deal a mortal wound. So when they die, they detonate. <laughs> it, it's really funny to think about. Um, their command ability is kind of weak. They remove the cover bonus for enemies. To be honest, I don't remember the last time I used cover bonus. Um, their command trait is okay. Well, actually, it's it's good and it's bad at the same time. It makes the detonating ability for the general more likely to go off and it deals more damage, but it requires the general to die. So it's pretty bad in that regard. And then plus one damage for a melee weapon for their artifact, which is fine. It's simple and good. So for their lore, these guys are pretty single-minded in their purpose. Um, they only exist to raise the land, kill, and reanimate. Uh, it has been theorized and whispered that when Nagash created this uh, legion, he only said, gave them one order, and that is all they have to do for the rest of eternity. And it is rumored that this order was only one sentence long. Nobody knows what it is exactly, but it's very simple. Uh, they tend to attack in endless hordes of burning, exploding skeleton warriors, um, and because they are so full of this fire and this volatile mixture, no one skeleton exists for more than a week. Uh, if they do, they burn out and kind of their souls just evaporate. They disappear and the construct crumbles, and then they are 
Reborn, etc. Um, on the tabletop, I think these guys are hilarious. They are hilarious meme sub-faction, super fun to play. Um, it For their strategy, it revolves around just having a lot of ways to regenerate models. So you can have a regenerating, exploding um, horde, really. Uh, so your uh, harvesters, your bone shapers, your heroes that can regenerate, just kind of all that stuff. Uh, it's super fun to have a regenerating, detonating uh, horde. But they are a meme tier. They're not the most competitive. They're kind of unreliable. But man, are they a good time. And that was the sub-factions for the Oceanic Bone Reapers. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or a comment. And if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. If you have a... Another uh, faction you'd like me to cover for sub-factions or lore, uh, please put that down in the comments below. Or if you have other ideas for future videos, uh, I'll be happy to hear them out in the comments. Uh, thank you. This has been the Wardrobe of Will, and I'll see you all next time.